Hello. When I give our general chemistry students a blank periodic table and ask them to fill it in, most, unsurprisingly, can't complete the lower half. Well, you might say that's OK. I mean, why remember something you can just look up? But if you're learning about the chemistry of the lanthanide elements, then it can be quite useful to know their names and their symbols and perhaps their sequence and position in the periodic table. But remembering this stuff is not easy. It requires a degree of familiarity. And this is usually helped once you know a thing or two about each of these elements. So for this video, I'm just going to introduce each of the lanthanide elements. It starts with element number 57, and it runs all the way along to element number 71. So, number one, or in this case number 57, is lanthanum. The name comes from the Greek word lanthanin, which means to lie hidden, and indeed it was. The element was discovered in 1839 by Swede Carl Gustav Mossander as an impurity, hidden in a sample of Syria that was studied by his landlord and mentor, the legendary John Jacob Bezelius, some 36 years previously. That takes us back to 1803, when John Jacob Bezelius and his friend, William Hissinger, and independently, Martin Henrik Klaproth, discovered cerium. Element number 58. Klaproth had the more pure sample of Syria, but it was Mossander who first isolated the element from Bezelius's samples, which is when he also discovered number 57, lanthanum, and a supposed new element, didium. Cerium was named after the newly discovered planet Ceres, although that turned out not to be a planet at all, but a large asteroid. Number 59 is praestinium, and if your Greek is up to speed, you'll recognise this as meaning the green twin, named by its discoverer, Austrian Karl Aura, who became the Baron von Welschbach. He had isolated it from Didyma, the oxide of Mossander's supposed new element, Didium. At about the same time, von Welschbach also discovered Neodymium, the new twin, element number 60, from the same sample of Mossander's Didyma. The salts of Neodymium are characteristically pink, and today Neodymium is a key component of our strongest permanent magnets, and you can find it in every hard drive and in very many modern motors and turbines. Element 61 is promethium, the last lanthanide to be discovered, and last because its natural abundance is minuscule. It has no stable isotopes, so all of its atoms have a transient existence. The longest lived one is promethium-145, which has a half-life of just 17 years. Promethium was found in the fission products of uranium during the Second World War, and it was named after Prometheus, the Greek titan who steals fire from the gods to give to the people. It was used for a while in self-glowing luminous paint as a safer substitute to radium. The switches and controls of the lunar Apollo spacecraft were highlighted with promethium-containing paint. Number 62 is samarium, also a component of Mossander's Didyma, discovered and isolated by Bosbaldran in Paris. Samarium is the first element to be named after an actual person, albeit indirectly. Samarium is named after the mineral samoskite, in which it is found, and samoskite is named after Vasiliev Grafovich Samarsky Pechowitz, the Russian mine superintendent of the mines in the Urals where the mineral was first found. In 1896, fellow Parisian Eugene Anatole de Marcy found spectroscopic evidence of something else present in the newly discovered samarium. It took him an additional five years to isolate this new element, which he named europium. Europium now has many uses, but it was widely used as the red phosphor in the now old-fashioned television technology of the cathode ray tube. 64 is gadolinium. This is also named after a person. Gadolinium is named after the gadolinium-containing mineral gadolinite. Gadolinite is named after the Finnish chemist Johan Gadolin, who had previously discovered the element yttrium from the same mineral when it used to be called yttrobite. Today, anybody who has an MRI scan is injected with a gadolinium-containing compound that acts as a contrast agent. That's about halfway through, and we need to bring back Mossander. Number 65 is terbium. 
discovered by Mossander using the same careful separation techniques that he used to discover lanthanum, and named after the mineral that used to be called Itabite, which is named after the small Swedish village of Itaby, which is where Itabite was first discovered. Terbium has uses as a green phosphor and is one of the components of compact fluorescent lights. 66 is dysprosium, discovered by Bosbrodrat in 1878 and isolated by him after eight years of repeated separations. Because of this, Bosbrodrat named his new element from the Greek word dysprotisos, which means hard to get. Terbium and dysprosium are both used in the magnetostrictive alloy terphenyl D, which changes its shape in a magnetic field and which is used in sonar systems converting sound into electrical signals. Moving on, holmium is element number 67, named after Stockholm, which in Latin is named Holmia. Stockholm is the native city of Per Theodor Cleve, who was the first person to isolate this element, and it finds its use in magnets and laser technologies. Element number 68 is erbium, again discovered by Mossander, and again named after the mineral gadolinite when it used to be called Itabite, which was named after the small Swedish village of Itaby, which is where it was discovered. The element has a characteristically pink salts, and its emission properties give it applications in fibre optics and laser technologies. Thulium is element number 69, discovered and isolated by Cleve, and again with a geographic aspect to its name. If you're studying ancient Greek history along with your chemistry, you may realise that Thule is the name that Pythias, the Greek explorer, used to refer to Scandinavia in the 4th century BC. Alternatively, you may own a bag or a roof rack made by the Swedish company of the same name. Thulium is a source of blue fluorescence, and it is used on EU banknotes in security inks, which are only visible under UV light. The penultimate element in the lanthanide series is number 70, Euterbium, named, you've guessed it, after Itaby, in Sweden, along with the elements erbium and terbium and yttrium. At present, ytterbium has relatively few applications. 71 is lutetium. It is the last lanthanide and was discovered by Frenchman Georges Eubain, and also by Austrian Karl Aura, the Baron von Elschbach, and by the American chemist Charles James, all at about the same time. Urbain and von Rauschbach got into a heated dispute over the priority of the claim. James stayed out of it and concentrated on the chemistry, becoming the world's foremost supplier of the new element for a time. Urbain won, and in the end, the element was named Lutetium, after his native city of Paris. Oh, I should say, the Latin name for Paris, as used by Julius Caesar, was Lutetia. It's quite a rare element, and so it's quite expensive, and has relatively few uses. So that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour and a few random bits of information, but at least you've met all of the members of this important group of elements, and you know their names, and their symbols, and perhaps you know their sequence. <laughs>